Hi, I'm Mary Elting. I'm an assistant professor in the physics department at NC State. I actually did my undergraduate degree in physics at NC State, and then after going to graduate school and postdoc out in California, I was thrilled to come back to state as a faculty member about three years ago. So I'm a member of the Quantitative Computational and Developmental Biology Cluster, also sometimes called the Modeling Living Embryo Cluster. And this is an interdisciplinary cluster on campus whose goal is to take multiple approaches from physics, from engineering, from biology, and put them together to have a better quantitative and mechanical understanding of development. We're interested in understanding the mechanics of cell division. So when cells divide, they have a couple of very mechanical tasks that they have to accomplish. The first is that they need to segregate their genetic material, which is the DNA that contains the blueprint for building the cell. The second task that they must accomplish is to divide the cell itself in half by pinching off the membrane between, these, between the two cells. And cell division is very important biologically uh, because it happens millions of times every day in an adult human and billions of times during development. The big challenge we have for this task is that we would like to measure the mechanics um, inside the cell of how it accomplishes this mechanically complex task. So ideally we would like build a tiny strain gauge and stick it into the cell and measure the force generation that happens inside the cell. But there's a couple problems with that. One is that even if we could build a tiny enough gauge, um, getting it inside the cell would likely be lethal to the cell. So instead we need a way to make mechanical perturbation inside a living cell. And so we do that by simultaneous live cell imaging. We're imaging the cells as they're alive on a petri dish as they divide. And then we combine that with laser ablation, which we use to like poke a hole inside the cell and mechanically perturb it. So by shooting our laser at the cell, we can make a hole inside the cell without disrupting the cell as a whole. And then we can watch the mechanical implication of that perturbation. One of the things that we've found that's really exciting and interesting and important here is that no matter um, what kind of cellular machine we perturb with our laser, we find that the cell seems to be able to detect that damage and repair it. So from a physics perspective, I'm interested in understanding how the cell can build such a complex machine that's able to self-assemble. The other thing we're very interested in is how these processes scale. So the machine that cells build is microns in size, but the parts that make it up are only nanometers in size. So that's three orders of magnitude different, and somehow those tiny parts need to build a very large scale structure um, that also is correctly oriented. My research group has two or three graduate students and postdocs, as well as several undergraduates and a technician. And my group is highly interdisciplinary, so some of those folks have a physics background, and a few of them also have a biology background. I actually got interested in biophysics in particular because as far as research goes, biophysics actually seems to sort of have the most classical mechanics. I also was very interested in the application of biophysics and its relevance for sort of, you know, the larger sort of biomedical kind of research uh, area. As part of this program, we have several shared trainees who spend time in labs, uh, both in the physics department and the molecular biomedical sciences department. We also have an interdisciplinary seminar series uh, that involves outside speakers coming in, as well as our um, students and postdocs giving research and progress talks to each other uh, to, share, to share their um, latest findings with each other and to have access to um, interdisciplinary feedback. I definitely uh, enjoy it here. The city of Raleigh is really nice. The environment of our lab is, is ideal. Everybody who's in the lab is all, we're all really good friends with each other. We all work together on projects. We all share information. We have a postdoc who's, who's much more of a, of a biologist than a physicist as far as background. She has like helped me figure out some of the biology of my project. Yesterday I was talking with her about some of the physics of her project. That, that sort of stuff happens all the time. Everybody's really friendly. Top to bottom is just, just a, good, a good environment. So we hope that in the long run, our work can contribute to a better basic understanding of this biologically important process um, and mechanically complex process. And then in the long run, that can lead to better treatments for diseases like cancer.